Hey again, everyone. Thank you for joining me. As I've mentioned before, sometimes there's a lot of people making a lot of content out there. So if you're still engaging in my discussions, it's always appreciated. I don't ask for any donations. I'm not trying to sell you a coffee cup t-shirt or send you to a PayPal link. So with that being said, there's a couple of things I wanted to talk about. But first, there was uh, somebody that asked a question. They said if I had a pet or a companion, and I want to answer that question, I do. And this right here, you can see her, this is Lulu. This is our family cat. And Lulu is short for Lucifer, my son named her. And uh, I did a video with her probably about five years ago. So if you want to know where I'm at in the house, all you got to do is look for Lulu because she follows me into every room I go. So that is our our family cat. And yes, uh, and we do have a dog, but I don't have a picture of the dog under the tree. This is this is Lulu under the tree. I don't think the dog would have fit. So anyway, yes, I do have uh, we do have some pets. So uh, well, I guess on to the topic. Someone had asked if I could elaborate on the the narcissistic mother and i'm going to give you the air quotes mother because uh, mine was an egg donor just like you've heard uh, sperm donors well she's the egg donor because i won't give her the title of mother there is actually a video of her lying her ass off to me and uh you can find i think it's about a year ago i kind of made a, a little production like sometimes i do and um, it's very interesting to watch a, a narcissist just catch him in a lie. And I love having a, a cell phone, these smartphones with cameras, because it will make most people behave. I can think of off the top of my head probably four or five times in the last four or five years that I've had to pull out my cell phone and go, are you sure you want to keep acting like that? And people will calm down. They will they'll start to mind their P's and Q's pretty quick except for the narcissist amazing imagine that so as i'm catching her lying to me she just continues to uh, hang herself and uh, man i wish i'd had this these thoughts earlier because i would have been recording a bunch of stuff but anyway i got some of it and it's there for you to see so the narcissistic mother why would she be any different to her kids than she is to anyone else or anything else since people are just things for her to use children are really easy targets um you know i've got firsthand experience with this It has to do with your station in life when you're in a power position over somebody else. I'm not talking about world governments because they're doing it too and we we bite and on the bait and, and, and listen and believe. We still do. We haven't learned our lessons with that yet. That may be coming. But in relative power, because it's a default set that you're going to trust your parents. Your mom wouldn't do weird shit to you, would she? Yes, she would, and she did. One of the phrases that I, and I loathe this because I've heard it from, from both genders, a narcissist, is they know, look, the narcissist misuses language to suit their, their ends, to the way that they distort and corrupt uh, language and what they're talking to you, it can it makes dead ends every time that you're trying to get somewhere with a conversation. Well, if you're trying to confront them with something or hash something out, or you're trying to get to the truth and they're gaslighting it, it's a total you can't ever get to it. So they'll, there's dead end, dead end, dead end until you finally get angry and you get to a, a nearly catatonic state with them. Uh, because you've been shut down so many times with just simple logic that they misuse. And so it, it, they'll see when you finally get angry or they've crossed the line. And one of the phrases that I've heard is, did I do something wrong? Well, they know goddamn good and well they did something wrong. But you know that if you confront them on it, that they're going to deny it, they're going to push it off to something else, and they have some reason for it. You're imagining things. I've heard that so many times from the mother that I must be imagining things. Another one was, what on earth are you talking about? When you know goddamn good well what I'm talking about. So they spin it back on you, and you start to think you're crazy. I'm not bragging here, okay? I'm not, I'm, I'm not trying to 
I'm not really not, but I'm going to tell you something kind of extraordinary. I'm going to tell you why I think it's that way. I have nearly a photographic memory. I mean, I can remember stuff very detailed from a very long time ago, and it's not with everything, but, and I think this happened because of the manipulation abuse that I endured for years and years, is that finally I started to record things and file them away to make sure that I wasn't going crazy because they're gaslighting you the whole time. Why would a mother do this? Again, because she doesn't care about you. She doesn't care about her kids. A lot of the a lot of the mothers, I think they got pregnant for simply for the attention. And after the kid's born, I just don't think they care. You know, I, again, I'm not picking on just mothers, but this is the topic. Okay, so relax. You know, there's other topics. I don't just pick on moms or women. There's one or two. But anyway, that's uh, that. This is very typical for them. Why would they treat you any different than any other object, the lawnmower or the car or, you know, the kid over here? You know, you do this. Sometimes they get, you know, kids end up doing more chores than they're supposed to do. They take on parental responsibilities. These are things we all had to endure. And I, I watched this, uh, these things mostly. Mostly, it was the head games, the head trip, the gaslighting, the stuff. Did I do something wrong? Then you would bring something up, and what are you talking about? Like, you have no idea. And I would hear this constantly, and I've watched it in other narcissists and narcissistic mothers as well. How can they be that way? I don't know. You know, before I became a father, you know, I was very young, and nobody's perfect, and... You know, I mean, I had my issues, but man, I took that really, really seriously. It was, it was, I believe it's the number one job of a human being on earth. I do mean that. I don't think there's a second, I don't think there's anything before that. If you are a parent, you got to stop your life and take, and you have to stop your life and, and raise these other, these people. And it's seen, you know, the narcissist is not interested in that. Um, they're interested in, in the attention. They're interested in the manipulation. Every, there's nothing about the narcissist that's meant to raise a kid. I've heard the, well, I put food on the table and, you know, roof over your head. And you know what? That's what you're supposed to do. What do you want a fucking prize? You want a medal for that? That's what you're supposed to do. You know, they make these excuses. And I've heard of people even have, you know, some of the families that I know, very wealthy people have some real, real screwed up childhoods because of this. People messing with their head. The mother messing with their head because of her station in life, her power over the kids. It's easy. It's easy to manipulate. And the kids are the easiest thing, too. They're the easiest targets because the narcissist can use them against you. Just like before the discard happened, you know, I was very much want to be a good guy. I want to be the good parent. I want to do the very best I can. It's a hard world out there. And inside the house should be a safe place. And I don't mean the safe place like the, you know, I'm talking about the woke community, you know, so that you can misbehave and act like an asshole and still be safe. We're not talking about that. Okay. But inside your house, you know, it should be where you're all right. Well, it's not like that's almost backwards in my house. So I heard, I would hear that. What are you talking about? You know, what? I, actually, she would say, what on earth? What on earth? And she would enunciate the L in talking. You know, because she was perfect. She would say, what on earth are you talking about? You know, so, yeah, I went through that. And those are just a couple of them. This is just scratching the surface of the stuff that, that I finally, I was going to tell you. Oh, that's why I was telling you about the, having the memory of, like, the narcopath even has not even y'all know this they have power even over adult children because you've been wired a certain way it takes a really long time to unlearn the nonsense that you've been through but my my memory when i okay what was it um i'm losing my train of thought sometimes sorry anyway so Oh, the other one was to be careful. That's right. So it looked like something was going good for me. I was doing something that was beneficial for me. And it was all, you know, straight and narrow, doing the right thing. I remember that I heard this a lot. You need to be careful. After the discard phase of family court, and we all know that family court with a narcissist is not to work things out. It is used as a tool of punishment 
and manipulation to hurt and harm. Period. End of story. That's all it is. So after family court, I had uh, met this another, I was trying to put my life back together and met this lovely woman. We're not a narcissist. We're not together now. And it's a long story, but uh, very beautiful, by the way. And that was a threat to the narco mother and some of the other women in the family. They didn't like that. She was a threat. And I'll never forget. Things were going pretty good, too. And she pulled me aside, the mother pulled me aside and said, you need to be careful. And I finally, it finally clicked. It finally, after years and years of this, decades, I finally asked the question, careful of what? You never tell me what I should be careful of. What, being happy? You only need to be careful of being happy. Is that what it is? I, I might get happy. Is that what? Because that really is what it is. It's kind of like when a kid, you know, tries to, you know, don't drop it or do the, or uh, little league or something, you know, better, better, don't swing, swing. They're trying to get you to do something different. Be careful. They're trying to throw you off balance. And she'd been doing that all the way back through to when I was a little little kid. I remember. Be careful. Of course, if you were about to make a mistake, they wouldn't say a word. They would just let you do it. So these are some of the things that, again, this is scratching the surface of what a narcissist does, the narcissistic mother. And for the life of me, I can't imagine why when you bring another human being into this world that it wouldn't snap you into behaving right. They're simply not wired right. I don't know. They have a choice, though. I'm not going to sit there and say that that just because they were abused and or they were manipulated or gaslighted as kids that that's that's a free pass. That's that's just bullshit, man. I'm not I'm not having that. Again, why aren't you a narcissist? I don't think I'm one. You know why are we act? Why do we act different than the narcopath? Because it's a choice. You have a choice. So anytime that someone would bring another person to the world and use them like an object, I think that there's a special realm for them. No matter what your belief system is, there are special places that those people go, sometimes for a very, very long time. And um, I can't say that it's not deserved. And my heart goes out to all of you that have had to deal with a narcissistic mother. I had no idea. I'm not even the same person after after the discard of the narcopath that I was married to and after the narcissistic mother finally kicked the bucket. You know, I can't I'm not even the same person now that their influence is completely gone. Just it's like night and day. I'm telling you, if it's your last ten minutes on earth and you figured out that the narcissist, what they were doing, what they're all about. It's the best 10 minutes of your life, and it'll be worth every second of it, really. So, my, uh, like I said, my, my heart goes out to people that have had to deal with this. It's, it's just, it's just a, it's a whole, that people just don't understand what it's like. And it, it wires you up for, it wires you up for failure, really. And uh, there's a long time I just could not figure out why things weren't panning out for me. I was working really hard to make it, make things work, and they just with well, there's other reasons too. And I was like I said, married one, and there are a bunch of them around me, and it just that's a recipe for disaster. You'll never, you're never going to be happy or successful around a narcissist. And if you have one of those mothers, I'm sorry, man, but you're gonna have to go no contact. If you are old enough to be out of the house and you got stuff that's You've got a career and family. There's no reason for you to have contact with her. Not, not, actually, that's not true. Uh, let me rephrase that. There's there's very few reasons, but sometimes you have to keep an eye on them, and you can go low, low contact. But if you can go no contact, do. Do go no contact as soon as you can. So anyway, look, I really appreciate y'all showing up. I'm glad to see you all again. And um, let me see if I can remember it this time, okay? So, I wish you freedom from suffering, safe from your abusers, with clarity, joy, peace, and wisdom. And with that, I'll sign off. Okay, thank you again, and I hope to see you all again real soon.